Santa Claus. Bill Pito, Digger Phelps, College Hoops tonight. Kentucky winless in the SEC, taking on South Carolina. Cliff Hawkins taking over late, had only two points, but late, un inside of five minutes to go, makes that, ties the game, and then, Digger, what do you have? Well, under a minute to go, Hawkins hits a little floater. Down one, Kentucky in a row. Tubby says, we got to get this win. Watch Hawkins, 16 seconds to go. 12 seconds. 10. Hawkins, 7. Seconds left. 3.4 deflected inbounds. Here's Lucas in front court. Lucas at the buzzer. No good. What a shot by Hawkins. How about Hawkins? Only had eight points, but hit three field goals down the stretch, and Kentucky survives 51 to 50. Well, after two losses, Mississippi State and then losing at home to Georgia. Tubby Smith happy to get this win on the road. 51-50, but Tayshawn Prince only three for 11. Big win for the Cats. Michael Wilkinson here of Wisconsin down low and he's going to put it in off the glass Wisconsin up 60 58 that's a score two and a half to go Kelvin Torbert the freshman nice spin move ties the game up at 60 30 seconds left game tied at 62 Wisconsin's Freddie Owens takes it in banks it off the glass tied they go up 64 62 8.1 to go Alan Anderson misses Al and Agagne grabs a board calls timeout 6.3 to go Michigan State down one off the inbounds play Marcus Taylor looking to win it ah not there out of bounds Michigan State with one last chance point two to go a chance on the last play inbounds pass Torbert is there what do we have was it up and good in time or not fans rush to court they're going nuts Bo Ryan says what's the call Tom Izzo doesn't know what's going on Digger what do you have after review you've got to understand there's 0.3 seconds that's all you have that's the rule and that's what Tom Rucker's discussing with both coaches 0.3 seconds which means it's got to be a touch play you see 0.2 on the clock You've got to argue the clock was late starting after careful review. Even Tom Issel agrees that the shot does not count. Wisconsin wins this game. 53 game home winning streak for the Spartans is over. Crazy finish, but they got the call right. Difference was turnovers. Michigan State had 16, Wisconsin only seven. Four players in double figures for Wisconsin. Big win on the road after they got lost to Penn State. Michigan State now 0-3 in the conference. Freddie Owens of the Badgers on the wait in the locker room to find out if Wisconsin had won. He said when he heard their fans boo, we knew. Tom Izzo, though, thought the officials got it right. Tommy Rucker made the right call. I knew it when it was when it happened. So don't question it. It was, uh, we had told KT before the play that all he could do was lob it up and just one hand go up and throw it in because you can't, um, you can't really grab it with two hands. And uh, we did. If anybody's trying to stick up for us, don't. To be honest with you, we got just about what we deserved. Don't blame anybody but me. Uh, don't blame the officials. They did not. Uh, that was the right call, and that's the way the game was, and we're just going to move on and try to start a new streak. So, 53-game home winning streak by the boards. Interestingly enough, the longest current streak now, still in the state of Michigan, Detroit, 36 in a row, followed by BYU, Illinois, Fresno State, and Gonzaga. Now, clock issues, nothing new for Michigan State sports this year. Football game this year against Michigan. They're down four. Watch the clock. Remember this? Tick, 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 tick. They're home, and Joe Smoker, or Jeff Smoker, the quarterback, spikes it. And controversy, a lot of people thought the clock should have gone to zero. As it was, they had a second. Jeff Smoker here with time on the clock to get this off. Touchdown, and they beat Michigan. Controversy with the clock there. Controversy with the clock in the basketball game. Games in a row. Kirk Heinrich is going to shoot. Drew Gooden tips it up once. This guy's been a horse twice, three times. This is what he's been doing all year at 22. Game was tied at 17. But you gotta love Matt Barnes. He's had a great week. 34 points and a loss against Southern Cal, but today gets the steal. 
great anticipation, gets a slam dunk, UCLA up 38-25. Rico Hines gets a seal, gets it back to Barnes, goes in again, 40-33. And Barnes just really on fire, making things happen. 27 points today, up and under, great pass to Jason Capona. Later in the second, Jayhawks down seven. Heinrich bombs away for three, had 17. Jayhawks within four. Later second, five-point situation. Capona drives, had 10 points. And UCLA with the upset as they storm the court and knock off Kansas 87-77. Well, Matt Barnes had 18 points in the first half, and Kansas, unlike them at all, 16 turnovers in the first half and shooting 34%. That was the difference. They never had a chance to get this game at UCLA. And not many teams can go into Pauley when you're number one and come out of there with a win. Nick Collison, only six points for Kansas, an off game for him, and UCLA winning this one, this after getting beaten by USC on Thursday. Texas Tech and Oklahoma. Bob Knight's bunch hasn't lost yet in the Big 12. First half, Sooners by 10. Holler Price to E.B. Era for the jam. Sooners by 12. Well, what is the price? Well, it's got to be Hollis Price. He just takes this whole game over, makes himself open. Whatever happens comes in. That's Solid. Again, though, and then Ara again. He had 20 points in the first half. In the second half, it's your man Price taking it. You over. gotta love what he does for this team. Calvin Sampson knows. Get him open on the perimeter. Hits a three. Find him again. Hits another three in transition. And one more. How about six out of seven threes for his 27 points? That was the difference in this game. The perimeter game. Texas Tech could not guard. Now Jason Dietrich with the steal coming down the other way. Look out below. All suitors. 98-72. Tech's 10-game winning streak is over. It's Bob Knight's first loss in the Big 12. Well, they shot 35%, and the reason why Oklahoma is so quick on defense, forcing 20 turnovers, it was a 14-2 run at the end to put it up 67-53. That's the closest they got, Texas Tech, because then Oklahoma just goes on a 15-zip run to blow it out. Sooners have now won 12 in a row. Georgetown Boston College, one week ago, BC had its home winning streak of 25, snapped against Pittsburgh. Troy Bell, not one of his better outings. No, he didn't. He struggled the whole game. Didn't play well. Four for 16 in the field. And when he goes off, and there's no offensive rebound, it just led to easy transition points for Georgetown. And you can't do that against that team. They're solid when they rebound. And when Bell is not on, Boston College is not on. That's why they lost to Miami of Ohio, over in Hawaii. And this is why they lose today. Transition points for the Hoyas. Big win, 70 to 43. And you got to love the fact that the Hoyas bounce back after losing and being 0-2 in the conference. Raswell here to Bethel. Tony Bethel for two. And 70-43, uh, to 43, that's a 27-point win. Mike Sweetney, 15 points, 11 boards. Bell on his outing. This was the most embarrassing game I've ever been a part of in my life. Kevin Braswell, though, 6 for 12, 14 points, but seven big assists. That's a solid offensive performance. But the key, can they keep it going in the Big East competition? Next stop, Virginia, North Carolina. First half, Tar Heels up four. Roger Mason cold, one of his seven missed three-point attempts. Yeah, but Mason, when he gets it going, he knows how to find the ball, make things happen, transition game. You got to love what he did in the second half for Pete Gillen's team. How about this? Taking it down. Transition points. Find it. Travis Watson blocks it. He goes up and under. Mason gets the score. Mason again. 69, 67, 21 seconds left, Virginia. He makes four free throws at the end to ice this game. Capel, not, not today, can't get it done. Big win for Pete Gillen on the road. Now, Carolina, three straight league losses. Really tough, shooting eight for 28. Perimeter game really hurts, even though Matt Darty's got these kids playing as hard as they can. They just don't have the guards to get it done. 71-67, the final. Mason hitting those four free throws down the stretch. Now 57 of 63 from the charity strike this season. North Carolina's fifth home loss this season, already tying the single season school record record winning streak of 13 games. Bonner really played consistent in this game. Knows when he is open to find his type of play, his type of motion. Goes in the drive, left hand lays it in. Florida now up on a three-point play, 35-27. Bonner wide open. Don't play me, I'll shoot that three. Makes it 20 points, up 17, 46-29. He's got 20 points at this part. Scott Hundley running the fourth three and one. Takes it himself here. Vandy trying to come back. And they're within 10 at 71-61. Too much from the Gators. David Lee drives, draws a foul. Florida wins it 95 to 85. Bonner the 28. Gators, uh, Justin Hamilton hurt his shoulder. 
but he's only expected to miss one game. Digger, should Florida be number one? Well, I don't know if they're going to be number one because Duke plays tomorrow night, so it's going to be interesting. But they're playing solid basketball. The only thing I don't like, they were up 64-39. Vandy goes on a 22-7 run. They cut it to 10, but it's the turnovers. 21 turnovers today for Florida, only 11 for Vanderbilt. That's why the game was so close. Next stop, Michigan, Illinois. Earlier in the game, it's the Illinois' big man, Robert Archibald and Brian Cook all over the place. Well, Archibald finally has showed up. I think they're playing so consistent now in that front line. I like what he brings to it. Brian Cook makes that score, but now Archibald, after giving the assist to Cook, he comes back and scores. Cook gets 20, Archibald gets 19. That's 49 points for that front line. As you see, Frank Williams take the game over. Little steal, transition game. Luther head, fouled, gets the bucket. Illinois goes on a win, 94 to 70. Frank Williams showed up late, didn't start, but did finish with 14. And Illinois now, its home court winning streak grows to 26. You gotta love Frank Williams, Sean Harrington, seven assists apiece. This is the Illinois team I'm waiting to see explode, especially with that front line play. How about Tennessee and Georgia? 30 seconds left, Georgia by one. Jarvis Hayes hits the jumper, Georgia up three. Next possession, Ron Slay. From no man's land. That's good. We're tied at 70. Under 10 to go. Georgia with the ball. Rashad Wright drives. Loses it. Who's got it? I got it. You got it. Ezra Williams for the win. Got it. Look at this scene, Digger. You've got to look at the clock. Watch the top of the screen. There's 0.2 seconds when he gets this loose ball rebound. Comes dribbling out. Buzz Peterson cannot believe it. But there it is. As you see the clock, he gets it off before the tick. It releases fingertips. It does count. A big win again for Georgia at home. But it's the third loss at the buzzer this year for Buzz Peterson in Tennessee. And it's the sixth time they have lost by four or less points. Really heartbreaking to be six and eight with those losses. Williams 22, Georgia now 14 and two overall, three and over in the conference. Their best start since 1923. Now give me something to talk about at midnight. David Graves, yes, get it done to Matt Carroll for a layup. Can Graves hit the three? Well, if he can't, there's a guy named Chris Thomas, who I think is one of the best point guards in the country. Another big three cuts the lead to two. And understand, Harold Swanigan looks to go inside. Read it, dish it. Graves again, that's the big three that ices the game, puts Panthers down by three. But the Irish in this whole run, they were losing 53 to 48 with less than two minutes ago. They go on an eight zip run. What a win for the Irish. Getting it on the road, two in a row. West Virginia, they go to Syracuse on Big Monday. Don't let me down, guys. I know you're watching. I said they'd give you the pub. So let's get done. You lost to go on all that home last Sunday. Well, you got two wins this week on the road. Maybe we should play the rest of the Big East schedule on the road. Don't play at home. Just pitched second loss of the year. Their coach, Ben Halland, we were way too hyped and took too many threes early. How about the rest of the Big East? We got Miami and Virginia Tech. Elton Tyler's going to be stripped. Brian Chase in transition. Bryant Matthews. Oh, what a pass there. Matthews jams it, Tech down five at the half. Got to like Syracuse coming up now next. Uh, Miami makes this happen. From that standpoint, Elton Tyler really played well. 77-63 win. Ending that losing streak, they played their first four games in the Big East on the road. They go two and two. Now they come home and play five. five. Barry Clark says, yeah, I'm happy. Let's get out of here. We've been on the road for two weeks. Syracuse, West Virginia. See what happens here. Look at the... Preston Schumpert nailing the three. And now late second half, Orange up five. West Waney, he nails a three. And Syracuse wins it by the score of 75 to 69 as they were able to convert some jumpers and go on to win. Shepard had 21. Well, when you look at West Virginia, didn't hit the three. Seven for 28 against that two-three zone. Come back, St. John's in problem. St. John's has been on the roll. Beat Miami. Beat Boston College. No, I mean beat uh, Providence on the road. John Lanahan takes his game over. Gets it done. Knows what to do when he's got that ball. Finds himself on offense. Make things happen. He had 20 points, three out of four from three-point land. And on the pressure here. The pass on the inside for the bucket. Friars win it 78 to 57. Right. And straight over Oregon and Casey Jacobson was on fire digger early. Boy, was he on fire in the first half. He just takes his whole game over for Stanford. Faces up, you put your hands down. He's gonna hit that three. Try him again. You don't like him, he'll do something else to you. Makes a penetration, goes to the hole and score. 22 points for Jacobson in that first half for Stanford. Luke Ridenauer bringing it up. 
Nails a three. Oregon up by nine. Less than three to go. Stanford down four. Jacobson drives, pulls up, banks it in. Stanford within two. Under two to go. Luke Jackson driving on Jacobson. He's trying to draw the charge. No call. Jackson hits the jumper. Oregon up four. Under a buck. Still a four-point game. Off of Jacobson's hands. And how about this? Oregon beating Stanford 87-79. You got to love Luke Jackson. Took this game over 27 big points for Oregon. Big win. They're now 5-1 in the conference in second place behind Southern Cal. Stanford just having a little tough on the road. But this ends a 10-game losing streak that Oregon's had against Stanford. Jacobson, career-high 32 in the loss. Curtis Borchard, also career-high 29 in the loss. How about Arizona and Washington? Curtis Allen to Doug Wren. Watch him hang and somehow make that off the glass. Huskies down by four. Josh Bernard makes this big shot in the corner, but Wren is there for the big dunk coming up. Jason Gardner time when you need it. Wren's a transfer from Connecticut, by the way. Jason Gardner just will leave him open, makes things happen from that. And you want another three, got it back again. Tough. Gardner takes this game over for Lute Olsen's team, hits another three. Cats go up 70-64 with two plus left. Allen here takes the three, misses out of bounds. Possession to Arizona. Watch it again. The ball may have gone off the fingertips of Channing Fry. Bob Bender not happy about the call, and Arizona hangs on to win. 74-69, Gardner with 21 points. Channing Fry played well in the first half. Ten big points. Ten points off turnovers for Arizona early. Big 12 as we go wrapping. Missouri K-State second half. Missouri up by eight. Kareem Rush dribbling around. And he's going to hit the three. One of six threes in the game for Rush. Later in the second half, Missouri pouring it on. Arthur Johnson gets the pass down low. Love Arthur Johnson. He's a double-double guy. I think he's the most improved player in the Big 12 in the paint. Missouri wins it 81-66. Oklahoma State, Iowa State. Ivan McFarland grabs a loose ball. Lays it in, ties the game at 30. Second half, Oklahoma State by two. Andre Williams in the post. Cowboys get great secondary break here. McFarland able to uh, get the lay-in. 14-5 run. They're up by four at the half. Second half, Cowboys by eight. Tyree Pearson. Goaltending is called. Pearson a career high 30. Cowboys too much. Victor Williams, nice pull up. And Oklahoma State wins it 69-66. Love their defense. Holding, holding. Iowa State to 38% that second half. Baylor, Texas. Freddie Williams. Top of the key. Bombs away. Got the three. Later in the first half, Williams, another three. And then Brian Boddicker knocks down the three. Ten first half threes for Texas. They win at 102-78. Second half, Auburn down three. Marquise Daniels hits the three. Ties it at 56. Under 20 to go. Bama down two. Irwin Dudley grabs a board, but he's rejected by Kyle Davis. Seven seconds to go. Al Auburn's up three. Lincoln Glass misses a second of two. Alabama with a chance to tie. Terrence Meade with a chance. Misses no, a three. No. Alabama again starting out in a conference road losses like last year. Their next road game, Georgia and Kentucky. Clemson Wake Forest, Darius Angaila. Baseline jumper, he had 14, wakes up by 19. Second half, Wake in control. Broderick Hicks, Josh Howard, who had 15. Wake wins it 96 to 55, the final there. And Mississippi State and Ole Miss. First half of this one, Jason Harrison. Nice pump fake, how about that, for three. He had 12. Second half, Justin Reed is on the baseline. And he's going to nail a three. He had 17, and Ole Miss wins it 66 to 59. Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State, and Wake Forest. They usually beat each other up and down. Each other. Except the last five seasons when, God, it hurts me to say this, Duke has just been holding it down. 47 and 6 against the rest of the state. Blue Devils rolling with North Carolina State. Mike Dunleavy. Kid about to go off. He'd be bouncing back like round ball. Averaging 16.9 points a game. Hits a three. State struggling in the first half. Ilian Eftimov 
Air mails, air balls a three. Wolfpack shot just 31%. Marcus Melvin jump hook, too much jump. State went eight and a half minutes without scoring at one point, while Dunleavy, dog, he scored 15 straight points at one point. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Duke 23 to 2 run the in the half. Then at halftime, it's a close, close game. Mike Dunleavy only leads State by one point. That's correct. Mike Dunleavy 22, State 21. He had 22 points, seven boards, three assists, three steals in the first half. And I ain't gonna say them, but that ain't right. He just kept rolling. 10 of 18 shooting. Career high 27 points for the game. Duke wins 76 to 57. So basically, State beat Dunleavy 57 to 27. Duke wins the game. Duke whips State for the 11th straight time, 16th out of the last 17. And it ain't like State is like Division Three. They had won seven of the last eight, including road wins over Syracuse and Virginia, a couple of top 10 teams. Fourth ranked Maryland in Atlanta Sunday, hooking up with Georgia Tech. Tony Akins with the three has Tech down three in the second half. Less than five minutes to go in the second half. Tech down four. Ismail Mohammed, nice spin and the foul. Missed the free throw. Tech down two. Less than 40 seconds to go. Maryland up 85 83. Lonnie Baxter's bad pass is stolen. Juan Dixon sees Akins with the ball. Now we have a flashback in the game for our audience just to let you know Akins is left handed. He passes, he dribbles, he, he still passes left-handed. He can shoot left-handed. Okay, he's a left. He no, well, uh, one more time. That's South just let you. He is a okay. sider. Just to let me know, he's left-handed. Okay, now watch Dixon. He knows he's left-handed. Get it over in the left hand, and then he takes it. Uh... Oh, he's, oh, he's not done. Dixon is going to look for Chris Wilcox. Maryland wins it. Dixon had 26 points, 10 rebounds. Aikens had 24 points and is still left-handed. Sunday afternoon, ex-Hoosier Luke Recker with a great bounce pass to Pierre Pierce. Pierce finished with nine. Tom Coverdale had six threes against Michigan State on Tuesday. Barry's one from the left wing and Blue proves that he's politically correct, the right wing. And then uh, from the same spot, Coverdale of Indiana's eight first half threes. Hoosiers then decide to go inside. Coverdale to uh, Jared Jeffries. Jeffries took over this game. Hoosiers by 11 at halftime. Second half, Indiana pours it on. It's Coverdale, Dane Fife. Indiana pulls off the surprise, roughing up Iowa at home. Hoosiers off to their best start. In